Hi guys, it's Blackie and welcome back to the channel. Okay, two quick updates and we're going to the main uh, thing about this. One, uh, yes, I still have a couple of haversacks left. And if you go down in my description box, I'll show you where you do the contact, down and dirty. I've now caught back up and so there are a few left in this run. It'll run from now until June 1st and then we're cutting off. Delivery of these will be in August, but there is a few left in this run. Okay. Okay, second point. To William, who contacted me and asked me to do that research and give you the information. I'm sorry, William, uh, the research about the uh, haversack, I have lost your contact. I'm very sorry. If you would contact me again, and I will, I've got the information ready, but I'm afraid I've misplaced your contact. So please contact me again like we did before, and I'll get the information to you. Thank you. Okay. Now for today's lesson, let's talk about the haversack, and let's talk about the way to set up a haversack. Now this has got to be kind of unique to you, because everybody's a little bit different. What you're going to carry in your bag, etc., is a variety of you, and I've already gone over many times what I'm carrying in my haversack. So we're not going to do that, but what we're going to talk about is access to what we're carrying how easily we can deploy it, etc. Now, on Friday, I talked about that piece of gear that everybody should have and experiment with, and that's jungle knots, because it is so handy for so many different things in camp. So I don't have to constantly keep retying knots. Now, I'm a big, big believer in that there are two kinds of cordage. There is reusable cordage, paracord, that I'm gonna set up for predetermined lengths and predetermined things that I can easily pull out and reuse. And then I want bank line for things that are unique and I need to cut and tie something or arrange something with, etc. And so that's where I go with it. I do not carry um, mule tape unless there's a need for it. Something that I specifically am gonna need that kind of horsepower. It's like I don't bring a chainsaw with me unless we're doing something that's gonna require a chainsaw. I'll tote a kukri for general purpose, and I'll scale up to something a bit bigger, like an ax, and then we're doing real work, I'll bring a chainsaw, see? To me, mule tape is like that chainsaw. If I'm bringing out mule tape, we're constructing something. Or I'm hanging up a big, heavy hammock, or I'm trying to make a, a rope bridge across a water or a some sort of other obstacle. I've got to lash something that's truly load-bearing together, where I need something way beyond even what paracord is. So I don't carry that every day. So pre-made up forms of paracord and pre-made and just loose hanks of bank line take care of for me. Now with my haversack, whenever I flip it open, in the top of it are gonna be the two most common things I'm gonna pull out first, right? The first thing is gonna be my fire kit right here. That way I can make fire easily. This is, you've seen it many times in my setup. And this is going to be my uh, stitchgear.com waxed leather fire kit. That goes on the left side. Then they're going to be my cordage. We will deal with that in just a second. Down in here further, we've got a knife I'm carrying for today to utilize. Then out would come my hammock. If I dug down to the middle of my haversack, then what am I doing? Well, I've obviously decided to stop, and I'm going to be setting up a camp. So it's further down the list instead of being right, right on top. I'm going to be pulling cordage and fire kit two to one over this. Because if I'm pulling this out, I'm coming to a stop. We're going to be doing... Uh, either a camp or I'm going to be sitting here for quite a while doing something and I want a place to sit down and rest and so that's what my ultralight hammock with the straps comes out for. Okay. And then in the bottom this is my one win shelter set that I've done in a fairly recent video where this is the rain cloak that zips up with the hood that also turns into the one man shelter. So this will be brought out for rain gear. It doesn't take me just a second or two to dig to the bottom and pull this out and utilize it as rain gear. And if I'm in a situation where it's gonna be 
sudden showers, I got a lot of weather coming up, I'll rotate it to the top of the bag. Don't be afraid to shift it around. Have like a predetermined layout, but don't be afraid to shift as conditions change. So if I'm being threatened right now with rain or something, this will come out. And then finally across the very bottom is a shemog sized piece of bright orange, 100% cotton with tent stakes. There's little cords right there you can see. There's tent stakes in there in case I needed tent stakes for it. These can be used for digging, etc. This can be used to wipe, bathe, signal with, be sacrificed for bandages and etc. And it stays across the bottom deck like a frame in the bottom of the haversack. On top of that goes the ring hit. Then goes the hammock. Then goes the fire kit. And then finally goes the cordage. And for right now this knife you're going to slide down this side right there. Let us focus on the cordage a second because why not, hey Blackie, why not put it up here, the cordage up here in your flat? I have done that in quite a while and it does have some good merit, but at the same time, things that carry up in there are like my emergency compass, a fork spoon combo for something to eat. I've got other fire tenders. I've got other things up in there. Those are my quick grabs. I'm going to be digging through. Digging the cordage out becomes a pain because of all those little oddball things that are up there. So therefore, I don't use it that way. I want it in a container, something I can pull out. Okay? Now, this is made here in USA in Kentucky by my niece up at uh, Made Ready Gear. It's made in Kentucky. And it is a severely water repellent Cordura nylon pouch with a zipper on it. It's got a couple of different anchor points. You got a loop here that you can hit a cabiner to, carabiner, but I'm going to say cabiner because I'm southern. And then, of course, there's a pair of belt loops in the back. This pair of belt loops lines up with the strap of my haversack. And since I can just unhook it, I can thread it onto here and put it as quick access to me. That's one of the advantages to this small size pouch. Now, I've got another pouch like this that is my navigation set. Where we're coming out, we're doing land nav. And I've got protractor, pencils, uh, compass, things like folded up map in here. And I will put it onto the strap down here where I can have easy access to it, see, in the field without having to dig into the haversack. This can also go onto a belt. But I have decided I need cordage. I'm going to pull this out. See? see how my organization is going. I can just open the flat and pull this straight out. Now, even in here, there's a way I stack it in there. So I have a rough idea where I'm wanting the cordage I'm wanting where it's going to be. The first thing out is going to be my long line. Now, a long line is a ridge line without the tarp connectors on it. It's a 20, 30 foot piece of 550 cord that's got a bowling on one end and I'm putting a single toggle on the other so I can use it as a windlass, as a, uh, a uh, cleat and I can hook line to it and pull great tension on it. Why not put a uh, ridge line in there? It's because ridge line is part of a tarp set. So in my little bitty um, shelter set there that I have with that rain poncho, there is a small cordage ridge line in there that is set up to hook to that. If I'm carrying a tarp, it should have stakes and a quick deploy ridge line, correct? If I'm not toting a tarp, why am I carrying a quick deploy ridge line? It's too many things hooked to that line, the quick connectors, they will get in the way. So I have gone with a um, simply a um, length of cord set up like a ridge line, but there are no tarp connectors. There's just one toggle and a bowling on the end. Why would I be pulling this out? Well, I need a long piece of cord for something. Either I'm needing to lash something down, like, you know, in the back of my truck, I got gear I got to anchor right quick. How about I'm on a steep cliff face and I want to lower 
something down to a lower level or pull something up from a lower level. That's what this line's for. I want to run an improvised line right here and throw a tarp over it that I wasn't planning on using a tarp, but I have to create a ridge line. And we'll deal with that in just a second. I got other things in that set to help that. So it's just a long line, but it's all those jobs for just a long line it needs to be clean. So I can slide something up and down into whatever quick and easy. So that's why I don't carry a ridge line. The ridge line goes with tarp sets. So when I pull out the tarp, it should have stakes and a ridge line in it. Okay, so I'm carrying a long line. Next, right here in the top, is the jungle knots I just created. The jungle knots is to be pulled out for all that clothesline, hanging up gear stuff, project. I can also use this to make a quick blind for hunting that I've demonstrated in an earlier video of how to just string it between two trees and then just randomly start sticking limbs and debris in it, throw some stuff in it and get behind it and sit down and you have a wall in front of you now that you can see through but it breaks up your silhouette for game observation, staying out of sight, you know, things like that, I can do it. I can also take this to help make an emergency shelter because I can run it between two trees, opening up these loops, and then I, here's the cord, I stick a limb in and fold it down. Now I come from this side, I stick a limb in and fold it, and that forms the ribs of a debris hut very quickly by using this, instead of having to lash a pole up there to lean the poles against, I use this to do it, and I kick leaves up on it, and I make a debris shelter relatively quickly. It's that mule in camp that does all those, hang it, hold it, bind it, firewood toting, etc. That's what this is really good for. Even better so than the long line, because of this series of loops, it makes it very easy for me to connect back to each other and put toggles in to carry it without having to tie a knot. Next, on top, you're going to have three of the six-foot pieces of paracord. It's got a uh, bowling loop in it. And what these are are bushcraft zip ties. These are the big ones. This allows me to be able to secure down or anchor to things. I want to lash poles together. I want whatever. And there's four of these. And all they are, like I said, is simply a uh, bowling on the end, and then it's like six feet long piece of cord that's set up as a Canadian jam knot. I can use these for guy lines, for setting up a tarp or something like that. Where I've lost a line, I got to improvise a line. These can serve for that. So there's four of them, and notice they're in an odd color. That way when I look, I can see and know exactly what that is, and in my mind, know how big it is. That's a six foot piece of one Next, I have four toggle lines, and these are set up with a bowling and then a toggle of some kind on them that I can use just like my long line to make secure tight lashings for something. These are probably not going to be used, and I'm doing some sort of quick construction like tripods things like that. That's what these excel at. And by having that toggle on there, it just makes it a quick lock. But these are only about six, eight feet long. See, the long line does the big stuff. This does that small job I need, like I'm binding a big hunk of gear together. I'm lashing something together to make a frame for something, whatever. That's what this comes in. Then, we have three loops that are tied. These become Prusik loops. Now notice, if I had to improvise my ridge line, I can pull this out and I can simply do it three times and have that loop to stick up through the grommet of a tarp and put a stick in there and I can have a ridge line out of that if I needed to. Suppose my ridge line got destroyed, broken, burned, whatever, or simply left at the left camp, last campsite, I can improvise with that to create a new one. And these make quick connections. Now, not long ago, I demonstrated in a video, video 
about taking these and if you go one loop it's a lark's head and it's just I'm hooking gear to a line. If I do three loops it's a Prusik loop and it'll hold it in position. So I have three of these, one out of bank line and two out of cord of some kind to use for that very job. So it's ways I can anchor to those lines to put something in place, right? Also in there, I have two large bushcraft, bushcraft twist ties. And what these are are shaft shackles that I have twisted the cord until it kinks up. As you can see, I can spread it apart and it comes apart. Now by doing that, if I anchor this unto itself, let's say to my pack, I can take this and spread it out. And see how it wants to roll right back immediately and twist back on itself? Acts like a bungee. I can hook two of these side by side on a pack and take like a jacket and roll it up and stick it to the two things and just twist the cord down a little bit till it kinks and fold it up and it'll hold a jacket or some odd piece of gear on it that I can quick and easily take off. Like a poncho, like whatever where I can gather up other gear and hold it in position. It also does the job of a uh, carabiner and I can use it to anchor gear. Uh, to like suspend a hammock or whatever. Easily to do. All I gotta do is just untwist it, stick the knot through the hole, and then twist it back. Now when it pulls under tension, that ain't coming out because that cordage will lock around it rather than popping off, it locks tighter around it. And so it becomes, in effect, like a solid piece of cord, like you tied a solid knot. But all I gotta do is slack it and twist to get it to come back off real easy. Then, in the very bottom, I have those giblets. I have one, two, three, four, five of these odd pieces of paracord that I've tied in like three foot long, whatever it was. It was a piece I was cutting off and didn't need or it was a leftover piece after I got done cutting on the roll. This became a bushcraft zip tie like we've talked about. It's a Canadian jam knot. And this is again, quick lashing, quick recovery. That is the key knot, that is the locking knot. That way is once you pull it all together and tie it, you pull the key knot and it'll loosen up immediately. So I'm gonna attach sleeping bags, things like that. Whole sleeping bags tight, whole gear rolled up tight. That's what these are for. And then finally, I've got about 35, 40 feet right there of uh, bank line in there to cut and make for things that this ain't going to cover, I can do with this. Real simple. All in that little bitty pouch. Now when I reload it, I put the bank line in the bottom, then I put the giblets on top. Then it's fo followed by the loops and the two big twist ties, like that. Then go in the four toggles. Then go in the four of the six foot zip ties, like that. Then goes in the jungle knot. And then right here on top, cross top, goes the long line. By doing it this way, I know what's in that pack. Fairly compact, still fairly flat, and it slides right in the top. Just like that. So when I pull it out, I know exactly what it is and about where in that bag I gotta dig to. So I've already got my camp set up, but over here on the side, away from my main camp, let's see. I want to have a fire over here and it's been drizzling off and on. And I want to take my poncho and just put it up here, kind of like a separate little lean-to of a place I can sit because I don't want to put my fire next to my sleeping area because I may be using the sill nylon tarp and I don't want sparks to get there. So I'll put a separate little shelter over here for my cooking fire and etc. see. I can run the long line up there, put the six foot out for guidelines, put loops up there to hang gear, and in very short order, have everything I need ready to go. And when I get done, best of all, I haven't had to cut anything. I can reclaim every bit of that cordage, re-roll it up, and put it into this set, and put it right back in, knowing where it is and how to get a hold of it. Now, maybe you need a bigger pouch because you want to carry bigger lines or whatever because of what you're doing. That's great. 
My niece also makes the bigger pouches. She makes like four different sizes. But this can be used, as you see, I've got Bushcraft twist ties on it, which act like carabiners. And this is so I can hook to the flap. I hook to my straps, and that becomes something I like to carry my field journals in. I like to carry my, my uh, study guides and things. I'm coming out and I'm gonna be working on edible plants. I'm going to be coming out and working on some other craft that I don't want to put it necessarily into the haversack. I want it as a kit attached to the haversack. This is a modular way that you can organize your stuff. So this might be the land nav or the plant identification or the whatever set that you're working on right now. Uh, animal identification, tracking, whatever. This could become something that I would attach to the outside because today we're focusing on that. See, it's not gonna be a permanent part of that set, it's an augment. When you're organizing and setting up your packs, organize your gear and set it up modularly so that you can pull it out at any point and have a rough idea of where everything is in that pack. So even in the dark, in the middle of the night, if something has gone sideways and I don't have a light, I don't have a flashlight or whatever, and I've got a tarp flopping around like crazy in a storm and I need to put a separate line here and anchor it out. Where are my tent stakes? In the bottom of that haversack wrapped up in that thing. Do I have a line that I can hook from it and go to that? Yes, I have that in those thing and where would it be roughly in that bag? So even in the dark, I can pull it out and therefore take care of what I need to do. Organization is the key. Remember what Nesmunk said, we don't go to the woods to rough it, we go to smooth it. And as I recently said in one of my classes, if you're not gonna do the head work, you're gonna have to do the leg work. Work smarter, not harder. And by setting this up, a repeatable system for you, however you wanna do it, so that when that situation arises, you know where your gear is and how to get to it, and it's not some jumble you got to fight through. Makes your life so much better. Hope you've enjoyed this, guys. If you have, please hit that like, share, and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Until next time, guys, I'm Blackie wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.